Today we have some micro machining to do. We have to make 20 of these electrodes. These are electrodes for plasma speakers. If you don't know what a plasma speaker is, I will put a link to the YouTube channel of plasmaspeaker.de. Uh, that's also who I'm making these for. Um, they are fairly small and have some, some features on them and they are machined from Can Cantel. Cantal, which I got supplied um, in form of rot, round stock. Uh, the problem is the round stock is wire. It comes from a spool and it's not exactly um, <laughs> very straight. So I have to do a little bit of straightening. This is the worst piece. The other ones are okay. -ish. These should be okay to be fed through a collet. Um, I think they, they will straighten out enough. The OD is 3.9 millimeter, this is 4 millimeter, so the runout has to be better than, than that to clean up to 3.9. But I think that will be that will be not much of an issue. I have no idea how this stuff machines, so we'll, we will take a little bit of a test cut on the lathe to, to get an idea. Uh, by bending it, it, it feels very, very, very stiff. And it's magnetic. Okay, that's interesting. I did not know that. In fact, I don't know, I, I really don't know much about this material. Um, so we'll just see how it machines. So put it in a four millimeter collet and go to town. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I will turn the, the tip here on the lathe or grind it later. I will definitely cut this chamfer here, this, this 12.31 uh, degree taper on the lathe with a form tool, but I'm not sure about this here. Um, I might grind it on the tool grinder. So then we need a, 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 a grooving tool, 1.5 millimeter wide. I might have something that's matching here and the rest is yeah straight turning. Okay, get a piece of the cantel wire in the in the spindle and I have a standard CCMT finishing insert for stainless steel here. A fairly new one, pretty 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 good condition. And we're just giving a shot. This is a small diameter so we're running at 2000 rpm. Okay, I don't like that at all. Um, you can see that the chip is, is behaving very poorly. It doesn't run off the, the cutting edge nicely. It just crumbles up and makes all sorts of weird noises. So uh, standard molded insert is not going to work. I have a modified CCMT insert here with a 30 degree chip breaker at half the insert's angle. Well, let's try this. Okay, this runs much nicer and let's try a little bit of cutting oil. Okay, that's going to work. Uh, high positive geometry and sharp cutting edges compared to the the slightly rounded over cutting edges on a molded insert. Uh, this will probably not last as long, but it will at least it works. So that's what we're going to do.
After test cutting I figured out all my tools and now we can actually machine the parts. Uh, I have a 4mm collet here and as you can see inserting the stock is not that easy due to the fact that it's uh, minorly bent. We're, we're going to machine the parts inverted. We're start, starting with the shank portion and part it off, flip it around, hold it in a collet and cut all the other features. Of course, I did already one off camera because I need to figure out everything before I start my actually production run. Um, the tiny, tiny tip on here is not turned. With a form tool that might be a problem because the closer we get to the center, the lower the, the surface footage gets and the worse gets the cutting conditions. So I decided to use the tool and cutter grinder to grind this point on here. With a, with a diamond wheel. This worked exceptionally well. I'm not sure if you grind Cantel with a CBN diamond or uh, aluminum oxide wheel, but a, a diamond wheel worked fine and didn't seem to burn up the wheel. We start with something like 10 to 12 millimeters of overhang from the chuck and take our turning tool and just turn the, the shank of, of the, the electrode. Okay, that's first side. Now we can pull it out 16 millimeters or something like that and part it off. Uh, final length of the part is 16 millimeters, so we're going to pull it out 20, so I have a little bit of room for my parting tool. Lining it up with the edge of the part. This is just a visual lineup because I'm going to part it off oversize anyway going for 16, 16.5 millimeters here. And you can see that we got a serious weeble wobble here, but once we flip it around and clamp on this machine section, we will machine all the, the uh, wobbliness out of it. I need to make 20 of the parts and I prepared 22 blanks and I already have one part finished which was my test part so I have basically three for uh, minor mess ups and I still have stock left if something really bad happens but normally uh, two, three extra is way enough for such a small run. Let's take a look at the tools. That's my turning tool, used for roughing and finishing. This is a, a 6mm solid carbide uh, piece of round material, also known as shank of an end mill. Uh, ground the flat here. Clearance angle on the side and front, about maybe 7 degrees. Then I ground this weird shaped uh, chip breaker step in here which is really hard to film but I think you get the idea it's a little bit more positive and it's, it's dropping off to the back of the tool and this corner corner here is mm, ever so slightly rounded over on the diamond lap the other tool I'm using in this uh, operation is this one these are triangular parting blades from horn P horn uh, you have seen me use them multiple times. I have about a million used of them. Uh, a very kind viewer sent me a bunch of them. And I regrind them until there's basically nothing left that's usable. This one is ground with a little bit of a lead angle. So the right side of, of the tool goes in first. 
uh, doesn't work too well in this material. The idea is to leave the, the part off knob on the on the stock, not on the not on the part of part. But uh, this material not so not so much. Then for for the next step, I have this tool. This is a 12.3 degree chamfer tool. You saw me grind this on the Deckel S1. It's basically a piece of carbide split in half. Uh, a, a, it's, it's a D-bit blank. And then I ground the 12.3 degree uh, angle on it with some clearance, about 5 degree clearance to, to the bottom so it actually cuts. And then the last tool is my 1.5 millimeter parting or grooving tool. Also ground from an end mill. You can see the end mill here. And by the way, um, I made these slotted, slotted uh, blocks. They are drilled in ream six millimeter, and then slotted almost all the way through with a ball end mill, and then hardened and uh, tempered back to something like 55 Rockwell C. And uh, these are very nice to hold road, round chain tool in, in a normal tool block. But most of the tools I use are very short and the, the clamping screws on the multifix are pretty far apart. And only one screw is a little bit on the weak side, so I use two. And back here I put in a 6mm dowel pin so I don't crush my, my clamping block. Uh, this basically just adds a little bit more locking power to this whole block. The parting tool is 1.5 mm wide. It has back clearance ground in, about 1 degree. Uh, clearance to the bottom, about 1 degree. Some front cutting clearance, 5 degree. And the top is neutral. It's not the ideal tool, ideal tool for this uh, operation because it's very long and skinny, but I had this already ground and it works, so I'm using that. <laughs> Machining the second side of this part. Uh, part goes in a 3mm collet. I, I took the 3mm collet, this is a cheap import, and I faced, faced the end of it. I, I preloaded it in a chuck and I faced the end with carbide. A turning tool. So when I push my part in, it has a shoulder and the shoulder rests up against this turn surface here and gives me a, a dual face contact, especially as the when the pull and the collar tightens and pulls the part in. It's more rigid than if the part was only held on its OD. And it doesn't hurt the collet. Using a torque wrench to tighten down the collet. Turning down the diameter to 1.5 millimeters and 1 millimeter depth steps. You saw me also taking the end to length with some facing cuts. Now we switch to our 12.3 uh, degree chamfer tool. Go in in a lower speed range and we will have this power fed. Um, I'm running this at 30 microns per revolution uh, because the cutting forces get relatively high and by power feeding it uh, the tool stays nicely in the cut, it doesn't chatter. When I go deeper and deeper into a cut, I will uh, slow the speed down a little bit. But in the beginning we can go for 400 RPM without a problem. There we go. 
nice little taper. Uh, now we switch to our happy little parting tool. This little chamfer needs a friend. A happy little groove. Back to a higher speed. There we go. Another one done. Pop it out of the truck. And the small the small tip, the pointy tip will be ground on the tool and cutter grinder. Okay, we're back at the bench and I have all 20 of these plasma speaker electrodes ready. These, these, um, these carbide insert boxes are really nice to keep small parts in Villa and also for shipping them. Uh, they don't bump into each other and the plastic is soft enough not to damage your parts when they rattle around in. I ground the small point on the end instead of turning it because turning gives me the problem of uh, uh, surface speed going down to zero the further I get to the tip because the diameter gets zero hence the surface speed gets zero and then the cutting conditions just get bad and with grinding you don't have that problem because uh, the grinding wheel is driven and your workpiece is spinning so these are done these go to Mr. Haumann. Um, Mr. Haumann is running a website called plasmaspeaker.de which is a website about plasma speakers and he repairs them and if you have any plasma speaker needs feel free to contact him. Um, and also thanks to Mr. Haumann for allowing me to film these parts and show them. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, thank you all for watching and I'll be back.